Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be continuing with our forward renderer. We're going to be re-adding the directional light to our forward renderer, so we'll be able to, you know, have directional lights again. And first off, we're going to have to actually set up the blending, because that's the whole focus of this. We need to blend in all the lighting effects onto our ambient scene. So first off, guess what? We're going to enable GL Blending, or GL Blend. And that will tell OpenGL, hey, we want to start blending the colors in some way. And once we're done, we want to disable this, because, well, next time we render, we don't want to have blending enabled, or else it's just going to blend the next ambient colors back onto our existing scene, and that's not going to work out. But when we are in this blending stage, when we are blending the colors, there is one thing we're going to have to do. And that is, we're going to have to set the blending function so it's doing what we want it to. In this case, we just want add, because that's what the light does. It's adding more color into the scene. So, we're, so we want to set up a blending function that reflects that. So, I'll say gl blend func, and the way this works, you can pass in, is it's going to do a, the existing color times something, plus the new color that we're adding on, times some other factor. So in this case, I'm just going to set those factors to 1. So it's going to take the existing color times 1, plus the new color times 1. So in other words, it's just going to end up adding them together. And that's exactly what I'm going for. So we got the blending function enabled. And we don't need to worry about changing this, because it's, dis it's disabled when blending is disabled, so that part's done too. And with that, there's one more thing I want to do, but it requires two sort of parts to do it. This by itself will work. You will get, well, it'll work on some level. It'll almost work, I should say that. The final thing we need to do is we need to change our depth test a little bit. Specifically, we need to disable, or set GL depth mask to false. What this will do is this will disable writing to the depth buffer. Because right now, if you aren't, you know, of course we want to re-enable it after we're done. But if you don't know, right now we do have a depth buffer. Every time we draw a color, it's checking against the depth buffer, seeing if this pixel is closer than the previous pixel, and if it is, it's drawing it. If not, it's discarding it. And we're going to disable writing to that. So in our rendering passes, where we're adding on more colors, we're not going to be writing to the depth buffer, because, well, once we've done the ambient pass, at the end of the day, we're rendering the same objects. The same objects are going to be including the same objects, no matter how we do lighting. So we don't need to write to the depth buffer anymore. And probably most importantly, what this is going to allow us to do is change the depth function. This is where it's really critical, because I'm going to change the depth function to gl equals. And after I'm done, I'm going to change it back to what it was before, which is gl less. And you might be wondering, what is G why am I setting it to GL equals? What this will do is this will only write the pixel. When we're doing our lighting, it will only actually create the pixel. It'll only do the lighting calculations, in effect, but it'll only... <laughs> Let me just start over. I'm, I'm trying to emphasize it too much. <laughs> this is only going to actually try adding on the new pixel with the lighting if it, it has the exact same depth value as the pixel we found to be nearest to the screen, which in all reasonable cases should be the the pixel that's <laughs> the one, the only one we can see. So effectively what we're doing is we're only doing lighting calculations for pixels that make it into the, well, into the final image, which is exactly what we're going for. So there, we now have, and that's also really important because one of the complaints with forward rendering is if you don't do it right, you can end up creating a whole bunch of lighting calculations and lots and lots of pixels that never end up getting used because they just get overwritten. And when we do this, we don't need to worry about that. So there. And don't worry, that's all the stuff we need to set up. Any code in here will be blended into the image, like we expect. So with that, let's go ahead, let's start adding the directional light shader, because we need a new shader for that. So, since we already have lighting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Fong Vertex, and I'm going to open up Fong Fragment, and I'm just going to copy the relevant code for directional lights from these, because these are already 
Well, these are already doing lighting. So, well, it's already doing directional lighting. And some other lighting, but it has directional lighting in it. That's the point. So therefore, I can just copy the code from there. I don't need to re rewrite it. So anyway, I'm going to create a new shader. It's going to be called forward directional dot vs. I'm going to create one more. Forward dash directional dot fs. There. And I'm going to open up these in in a text editor as well. So there. I'm going to start by just copying Fong Vertex Shader. And because I'm doing this in one GLSL 120, because I don't need any non 120 features, I'm going to go ahead and change this. And that involves changing the layout stuff to attribute, spelled correctly. Attribute, oh, right, attribute vec3 position. I deleted a little bit too much there. Attribute vec2 textual coordinate. And attribute vec3 normal. And change these to vary. So there, that should be all we need to change it. And actually, I think... You know, I'm going to change the, the matrix names to model. Yeah, yeah, model and MVP. But other than that, I think that's really just, just about everything we need to do for the fragment shader, or the vertex shader. Not, we haven't done the fragment shader yet. But yeah, this should be the correct vertex shader for our forward directional light. So now the fragment shader part. I'm going to start by just saying version 120, because that's what I'm going for. Let's see, I'll start by copying the input structure things. Now, I, I am going to be taking in varying stuff. In fact, I can probably copy that from here, yeah. In fact, I can just copy it directly from here, and that's correct. I don't need an output here, because this is... I'm doing it in GLSL 120. GLSL 120 has... or 1.2, I guess, but... You know, same thing. GLSL 1.2 has a special variable for that, so I don't need to explicitly define it. I'm going to copy the base light and directional light structures, because those are the relevant structures for this. Sure, I'll just copy the all the uniforms except for the point and spotlights for now. And I'll delete the ones that aren't needed as necessary. And let's see, calc light. Okay, I'm going to copy that function because, well, yeah, I'm going to need to calculate lighting. And I'm going to cal copy the calc directional light function because we need to calculate directional lights. And don't need any pointer spotlights. And the main function I'll just copy for now, and I'm going to delete a whole bunch of this. Well, maybe not a whole bunch, but Definitely enough of it. Oh, oh yeah. First thing I can delete, I can delete the ambient light, because ambient light's being done in a completely separate pass. And I can also delete base base color. And I'm gonna rename this to Diffuse, because I like well, it's a more descriptive name. And I like it better. <laughs> so yeah. And I'll just change that where I'm sampling the texture. And I can change it to texture 2D, because that's the name in GLSL 120. Okay, that also means I don't need the color vec4 at all. So, in fact, yeah, I can get rid of this, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I can just say color starts off as the texture, and I can get rid of the total light. I can just say that initial starts off as a vector 4 of absolutely nothing. And then I can add on calc directional light, and I can get rid of all that. Ooh. Hmm. And I'm gonna change the I'm actually gonna change the calculate method event or function eventually, just cause, but yeah. And this, I'm gonna change that to GL frag color because that's a GLSO 1.2 variable. And actually, with that, yeah, I can really just inline all this because I don't need to do all that generic calculation at this point. So I can say frag color equals Texture 2D times total light, which is just going to be the directional light and the normal, and the normal is just going to be the normalize of normal zero. So yeah, I can just inline the entire calculation because I'm not using the variables for any other purpose. And there, that's that should be the directional light shader. Now actually using it, that's going to be a little bit trickier. I really hope I didn't make a mistake here. Oh well. 
So let's go ahead and add our new shader class, forward directional. Hmm. And yeah, I can delete the comment saying it's created by Batman. And Fong Shader. Aha. I'm gonna s actually I'm gonna start by copying forward ambient instead. I just I I, th I find it simpler to start with, I suppose. I can just change everywhere it says forward ambient to forward directional. And there. So really this is there isn't too much in-depth stuff to actually doing the shader part of it. Most of it's just copying from other places in case you haven't noticed yet. Oh, and it extends the shader. But, you know, it'll be more interesting once we actually get this up and running and we can do multiple passes with this. Oh, not forward views, forward directional. There. And with that, I also want to set the attribute location of... Where is it? Of normal to 2, because I'm not doing that with the layout construct inside the actual shader. That, that doesn't exist until GLSL 3.3, or at least 3.0. I don't know if it's exactly 3.3. I don't know all the versions where every feature was introduced, but, you know. Okay, so uniforms. I'm going to copy a lot of these from Fong Shader. So I'm going to copy Transform and Transform Projected which will ultimately be, end up being model and MVP. As for where they're set, I'm going to copy that also from Fong Shader. <laughs> you know what, I should just go out and say I'm going to copy just about everything from Fong Shader. But you know. Yeah. Okay, what else? Okay, so that covers all the uniforms in the directional vertex shader. For the fragment shader, though, I need IPOS, diffuse, specular, and stuff. Okay, however I use those, so... Specular and IPOS, there's that, so... Go ahead and update those, right here. Good, still works. And I also want to actually, you know, add them. That's also kind of important. Oh, right. want to add them right here. And what else? Ah, the directional light, which is actually exactly what I want, because I only want one of them. <laughs> yeah, you'll see... you'll see how it works out if you don't know already, so... Let's see, where am I setting directional light? Ah, right here! Okay, that's convenient. So... I'm gonna add the directional light thing here, I'm gonna update it all the same. Ah, and set uniform directional light to that. Okay, cool. That I think I'm gonna need to copy the function. <laughs> but other than that, that should be just about everything. Yeah. One for base light and directional light. That should set everything. I can delete these now. Oh right. That and I don't have a directional light yet. Okay. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say git rendering engine dot git directional light. Because since I'm not I'm both, yeah, since I'm more focused on actually getting the lighting working rather than how to organize it right now, I'm just gonna put all my lights in the rendering engine. So I'm gonna have a private directional light in the rendering engine called directional light. And just like with get ambient light, I'm gonna have a function for getting the directional light. And it's gonna return, guess what? A directional light. Yeah. Most of this code right here is pretty easy, and it's going to stay pretty easy until we get more stuff working. But that's when things are going to get a little bit interesting. So there's going to be a new directional light. What does directional light take in again? Ah, taking in a new base light, which takes in what again? <laughs> ah, a new vector 3F, which I'm just going to say 111. Intensity I'll say 0.8. And what else is direction line taken? Right, direction. So in a new vector 3f, I'll just say 111. There. And good. So that should work. Because it's normalizing. Or at least it should give me something reasonable. Hmm. Now do I have everything? 
Have I missed something? Does Fong Shader do anything with the sampler, or does it just leave that alone? It appears to just leave that alone, so if I copied all the code correctly, <laughs> then this should work. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another shader called forward directional, which is going to equal forward directional.get instance. Oh, not shadow. <laughs> it's not a shadow, it's a shader. And there, I'm going to set the rendering engine to this, just like before. Because that's my temporary hack. And forward directional. Right, no. R wrong thing. I'm going to render the scene with forward directional as the shader. And this may or may not do anything. In fact, I'm. I may have screwed something up, so let's see what happens, if anything. Oh, look at that! We are seeing lighting. We have directional lights working in a forward renderer. And you know, here is the interesting thing. W watch this. I'm going to have a, a private directional light. I'll call directional light 2, sure. And... I'll say directional light 2 is similar, but um, has a different direction, and it's red. And the current one is blue. Sure. I'm just making this up. <laughs> what I can do, for instance, is I can have a directional light. I can swap them, so I'll have directional light temp, which equals directional light. I can say directional light equals directional light 2, and I can say directional light 2 becomes temp, so that should swap them. And I'll do that again afterwards, so that they swap back. But what I should be able to do is just render again, and just like that, two directional lights. In theory, I don't think I'm getting a lot of light from the other directional light, but I see a little bit of red in there. Maybe it is the direction. Maybe I need to set the direction to something. Hmm. Or maybe I need to say, leave the direction alone. Oh, right, that would be the issue. Ah, yes, that's why it's not working. Okay, never mind, never mind. It makes sense now. What I was doing is I was having it well, shine in a direction that could never possibly hit it. So yeah, I'm going to change these back down to 0 0.4. And now look at this. If you actually have them shining onto the surface, then having multiple lights, just as simple as that. Oh, I probably want a slightly different direction. Don't reverse it on Y, that's a bad idea. But, you know, maybe X and Z, that, that should still work. It should still be shining downward. Yeah, look at that. I've got blue and red directional lights. I've got multiple lights just like that, just by having another call in the rendering engine. That, my friends, is just a taste of the power of forward rendering. Of course, granted, this isn't exactly, well, you know, this isn't exactly the most, the greatest demonstration. I mean, you don't usually want a huge bounty of directional lights, but once you get into point lights and spotlights, and once we get to control the number of them that exist, then you might start to see just how powerful this really becomes. So yeah. <laughs> hope you enjoy. Hope, hope you learned. And I'll see you next time, where we'll start adding back in point lights.